Hi everybody. Today we are going to watch on rhizobium biofertilizer. First, let's see what is a biofertilizer. The term biofertilizer denotes selective microorganisms like bacteria, fungi and algae which are capable of fixing atmospheric nitrogen or convert insoluble phosphate in the soil into available forms to plants. And another definition for biofertilizer is nutrient inputs of biological origin for plant growth. There are different types of microorganisms which are being used as in biofertilizer. First one is bacteria like rhizobium, astobacter, azospiralum, cyanobacteria, azola, pseudomonas, flavobacterium, bacillus, micrococcus and sacina. In fungi, VAM like that is vesicular, advascular, mycorrhizal fungi, Penicillium and Aspergillus, and in Actinomycetes, Francia, and in blue green algae, Cyanobacteria like Oscillatoria, Azola, Anabena, Aloria, Nostoc, Tolipothrix. There are many advantages in using microorganisms as biofertilizer. First one is to reduce the usage of chemical fertilizer in agriculture. Second one is they are cost effective, eco friendly and renewable source of plant nutrients. And third one is to reduce the attack caused by these soil borne pathogens. And fourth one is it plays an important role in maintaining long term soil fertility and sustainability. And fifth is it secrete plant growth hormones like indolastic acid, auxin, gibberellin to increase plant growth. And the sixth advantage is microorganism possess important characteristics like salinity tolerance, temperature, biological control of phytopathogens and insects along with normal plant growth promoting traits like phytohormone production, cedrophus. And the last advantage is there, it has, uh, there are various symbiotic association like uh, rhizobium, bradyrhizobium, mesorhizobium, these microorganisms are now being widely used as bioinoculants to promote plant growth, nitrogen fixation and development under stress condition to improve the soil fertility. Bacterial inoculants are many free living and symbiotic bacteria that supplies nitrogen and can be used as in bacterial inoculants. And there are many methods for preparing inoculants. First one is the bacterization or green manuring, which is the most widely used techniques for preparing bacterial inoculants. And the bacterization is a technique of seed raising with bacteria where water is used as a suspension. For example, Astobacter, Bacillus, Rhizobium can be used. And Astobacter in trade name of Astobacter biofertilizer, which contains cells of Astobacter cruococcum. And Phosphobacterin, trade name of phosphate biofertilizer, which contains phosphate solubilizing bacteria examples, Bacillus megatherium was phosphaticum. What is symbiotic nitrogen fixation? Microorganisms that are capable of fixing atmospheric nitrogen in the host plant symbiotically is known as symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria. The host plant provides sugars to the microbes as an energy source and in exchange the microorganism provides fixed nitrogen to the host plants for their growth. Example for my symbiotic nitrogen fixers are rhizobium, francia, Annabella, Azola, etc. Now let's see a detailed lecture on rhizobium biofertilizer. Rhizobium is a soil bacterium which inhabits in the root nodules of many leguminous plants. They fix atmospheric nitrogen after establishing inside the root nodules of legumes. Within the nodules, the rhizobia convert free nitrogen into ammonia which is utilized by the host plants for its growth. Rhizobium fix 50 to 20 kg nitrogen per hectare per year and increase the crop yield in pulses by 20%. The nitrogen fixing ability of the rhizobia differs among species and bacterial strains. Classification of rhizobium, it falls under the kingdom. Bacteria, phylum proteobacteria, class rhizobiales, family rhizobiaceae, genus rhizobium, bradyrhizobium, cynorhizobium, and species leguminosarum, 
lentil, trifoli, melidoti, japonicum. Next we will see characterization of rhizobium. Rhizobium are unicellular, rod-shaped, aerobic, non-spore forming, motile, gram-negative bacteria. The green color it is indicating the rod-shaped bacteria. And uh, next we will see about isolation of rhizobium. Nob and Hiltner in 1895 introduced a laboratory culture of rhizobia with the name nitrogen. Different species of rhizobia resides in soil as well as in the root nodules of legumes. Therefore, they can be isolated either from soil or root nodules. Now we will see the isolation procedure of rhizobium. Healthy root nodules are taken out from the mature plant and it is washed with the sterile distilled water to remove the soil particles and the root nodules are externally sterilized either by mercury chloride or sodium hypochlorite solution or by using 90% ethanol. Then the clean nodules are crushed in sterile water and suspension is streaked on petri plate containing EMA that is a yeast extract mannitol agar with a pH of 5 to 7. This yeast extract mannitol agar plates are incubated for 3 to 4 days at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius and later after 3 to 4 days of incubation white translucent glistening and elevated colonies appear on the surface of the EMA medium. This is the composition of EMA medium that is yeast extract mannitol agar medium. It is containing a composition of mannitol, yeast extract, dipotassium hydrogen phosphate, magnesium sulfate, sodium chloride and the pH is around 7. Identification of rhizobium. Both rhizobium and agrobacterium grow on EMA medium. There is a special test known as crema test. It is nothing but the Congo red yeast extract mannitol agar test. This medium is prepared by mixing 2.5 ml Congo red dye with 1 liter of EMA medium and the bacterial colonies grown on EMA medium are streaked over crema medium and the plates are incubated at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius for about a week. And the rhizobium utilizes Congo red dye very slowly and forms white circularized colonies. In agrobacterium, colony characteristics like, like rhizobium, but colony color is similar to Congo red. Hence, white color colonies are isolated and the rhizobial inoculants are produced. The second method of observation that is identification is by using microscope. Bacterial colonies grown on the crema medium are stained with carbal fission and observed microscopically. They can able to view the beta polyhydroxybutyrate granules of rhizobium. And the third test is the glucose peptone agar test. This is actually a confirmatory test of rhizobium. A master plate is prepared using the bacterial colonies and EMA and the agrobacterium grows well on the glucose peptone agar test but rhizobium fails to grow on this medium. Inoculum production that is mass cultivation of rhizobium. We have to inoculate rhizobial inoculant in broth medium and then it is transferred to the fermenter. The pH of the medium is adjusted to 6.5 to 7 by using potassium hydroxide or sulfuric acid solution in the EMA broth and then we have to sterilize the growth medium and inoculate with mother culture and then we have to incubate for 3 to 4 days at 30 degree to 32 degree Celsius. Then the test culture is checked for the purity for 4 to 9 days and the quality of the broth is also being checked. In the mass inoculum production of rhizobium, we have to measure the cell counts in the broth. So the cell counting of the fermenter broth are done by using serial dilution and plating method. When the cell count reaches 10 to the power 8 to 10 to the power 9 cells per ml, the broth is taken from the fermenter and used as an inoculant. And next we will see how to prepare carrier based inoculum. A carrier is a nothing but an inert material used for mixing with broth. So that the inoculants can be handled, packed, stored and used. A variety of carriers are used for example peat, lignite, farmyard manure, charcoal powder etc. It can be used in appropriate uh, proportion. Calcium carbonate is also used for better curing. And finally we will see how to use or how to apply the rhizobium in the field. First method is dusting. 
the inoculant is directly mixed with the dry seed and the second one is slurry the inoculant is mixed with wetted seed or some sticker like uh, gum arabic and the third one is street meter street treatment or seed inoculation which is the most widely or most commonly used method in this method the inoculant is made into slurry and mixed with seeds the seeds are coated with charcoal finely ground lime calcium carbonate rock phosphate and clay like material and the treated seeds are dried in shade overnight and used in fields about 900 gram of biofertilizer is used to treat legume seeds and then it is applied to one hectare field this is a rhizobial inoculants can be applied for different pulses such as arahar chickpea lentil oat bean wheat groundnut soybean green gram black gram and cowpea i thank you for your patience listening hope you have gained some knowledge regarding rhizobium biofertilizer thank you